in Leipzig, and we can actually go ahead and take a closer look at some of his achievements. Yeah, also showing off those cards that he's also playing in his deck, the Zapdos and the Jirachi being key cards there, and also going a different way with that sprint Zeb Striker. But yeah, having a look at his achievements, top eight at the World Championships in 2016, a regional champion, a top eight at another regional, and also being the Dutch national champion, nothing to uh, scoff at as well, back in 2012. So obviously a very seasoned player, clearly been playing for a little while as well. Those results going back to 2012 mean that he's been around the format for a while and he certainly would know what all of these cards are doing. He comes into this top eight match as first seed, again, having only dropped one round in this tournament and having won 11. 11 out of 14 is a pretty amazing record. Yeah, that's a win rate that uh, you don't see every day. So congratulations to him on, on coming into the top eight here as first seed. And he's going to be playing that Jirachi Zapdos variant with Zipstrika, with Buzzwool. He has the Nihilego in the list as well. So it's a bit of a more fringe style of the Jirachi Zapdos list, but one that was really working for him, for Robin Schultz as well, who finished in the top 12. But we can go ahead and take a look at his opponent. It is Stefan Ivanov, the North American international champion from 2018. And he's going to be playing Zoroark Lycanroc. And there is the card that we were alluding to in his list. He's got Riolu and Lucario GX. Yeah, I mean, also the Absol as well. The Absol is a card that's going to really help him in this matchup against uh, Jirachi and Zapdos because players want to move that, uh, you know, Jirachi around all the time and use the Stellar Wish. But I'm more focused on the left-hand side where all I see is the word champion. That's pretty nice. Uh, you're filling out your resume and you've got at least four spots where you can write champion. You know that this is a guy who's been playing this game for a long time and at a very, very high level. NA international champion, Valencia special event champion, and two-time French national champion. So incredibly impressive stuff from him. He could add Oceania international champion to that list. Or maybe it's going to be Burt Walters taking it in his first top eight appearance at an international championship. But we are getting into game number one here. It's a blitzel in the active for Burt. He is going to be going first. Yeah, probably is going to find out very soon that that Zeb Striker is in the prize cards. He has started with Blitzel, and that Blitzel is not going to be useful unless he can find that Zeb Striker pretty soon uh, by taking a few knockouts. But this is something that a lot of players do when they first play a search card, such as Ultra Ball. They'll look through their deck, they'll find out what's in their prizes, what tools are available to them, what combos can they pull off later in the game. It's really important to know exactly what's in your deck. So he's just taking a bit of time to look through he probably knew straight away, I'm going to get a Jirachi, but he just wanted to get as much information as he possibly could. And then on the side of Stefan, he's got two Zorua on the bench, as well as a Riolu in the active. So setting up for potentially a very strong turn two. We can, he can uh, evolve the Zorua into Zoroark and get started using that trade ability. Putting down the skateboard on Jirachi now, and the, the optimal turn one supporter as well finds that Lily. And off that Lily finds it quite a few more cards to search for more of those basic Pokemon. A bit of discussion about how many cards he's been drawing from his hand. It's just clearing that up by showing. But yeah, he's got a lot more, more uh, actions he can do on this turn other than just playing that supporter. He's got those nest balls, which lets him search for a basic Pokemon, play that down, and then we see that really interesting card. I believe that's the Nihiligo that he does yes. run. I'm not sure if we've seen that in action on stream just yet and if it's had an impact, but this is a pretty good start from Bert. He just wants to put down some basic Pokemon, some tools, uh, probably wants to try to get that Blitzel out of the active position. He's going to start attacking with Zapdos on the next turn and really put some pressure down on Stefan and say, I'm going to start taking prizes from turn two. What are you going to do? Yeah, and he especially would love to start taking those prizes quickly because he knows that his Zipstrika is in the prizes. So if he can find that, he can get started sprinting and just increase the amount of cards that he has access to on every single turn. It's also really important against a Zoroark GX deck especially to be taking uh, those Zorua knockouts as quickly as you can. Uh, you don't want your opponent to set up multiple Zoroark GX because then they have access to so many trade abilities and the ability to fill their hand with all the combo pieces and lots of different cards that they might be looking for. Looks like Bert's going to continue his turn with that stellar wish from Jirachi, that ability that we've been talking about, hyping up uh, all weekend. And you know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised to just see decks just running three or four Jirachi from now on. I think that 
is smart. <laughs> um, you don't need to ever worry about attacking with the Jirachi. As long as you have the room for the escape boards um, and maybe a, a couple switches, of course you're going to be playing the Guzmas anyway. You can choose to run the escape ropes as well, but then suddenly the deck just has so much flexibility. It has the ability to dig so deep every single turn, and especially when you're going to be playing um, these power-up cards like Electro Power, like Choice Band, you need to have access to them at the right times. So Jirachi is just the perfect support Pokemon for this deck. And we're going to be moving over to Stefan, see how he can answer on his turn one. He's playing a deck that is heavily invested in the setup, but he does not have tools that other Zoroark Lycanroc decks have. And, and specifically, I'm talking about Professor Elm's lecture. Uh, he's not playing that supporter to pull out three Pokemon with 60 or less HP on the first turn to guarantee that he has the basics to evolve into on turn two. Instead, he's going to have to go find them the hard way with the Nest Balls, the Ultra Balls, and three copies of Pokemon Communication. And when you're not starting with Professor Elms, you're pretty happy to see in your opening hand three basics because it makes it so much easier to just, you know, fill your bench with those basics that you need. Things like Ditto Prism Star, things like Zerua, things like Riolu, um, and maybe even, you know, those Rock Ruffs as well if you want to threaten a, a Lycan Rock at GX. But it looks like Stefan's looking at his hand and kind of eyeing up that Alolan Muck as well. So that's definitely an option for him in this uh, matchup. It looks like he's going to throw it away in in uh, hopes of finding something else, and that something else is a Tapu Lele GX to find a supporter for the turn. So he does not actually have the Alolan Grimer to evolve into the Alolan Muck. The only option he has is that Ditto Prism. So until he finds that Ditto Prism, you might as well Pokemon Communication back the Alolan Muck and get something that's a little bit more useful right now. The Absol immediately can be used to try and disrupt these Jirachis, make it more expensive for them to retreat, and make it more difficult for Bert to chain Stellar Wishes every single turn. Yeah, when you're attaching an energy to Jirachi to retreat, you're not attaching an energy to Zapdos to attack. So it makes it a little bit more awkward. Now these Zapdos Jirachi decks do run quite a few uh, switching cards. You know, you have those two switch, that one escape rope. A little bit different to some of the other ones we saw, which were, you know, maxed out on those cards, had three or four copies of each. But, you know, this Jirachi is not necessarily trapped in the active position. There are ways for Bert to get around that Absol's uh, ability that's, you know, costing one more for Jirachi to retreat. And then we see Stella Wish. They grab a trainer card from the top five cards from the deck. I know what Bert would be looking to get an attack off definitely this turn. He's got to find an energy to play on that Zapdos and to find a way to get the Jirachi out of the active position. And one way to do that is to play a Guzma. Yeah, and I think he picked up one off of Stellar Wish on the previous turn, so maybe he was looking for something with a little bit more utility on this turn. But as long as he does have the energy and the Guzma, he's going to be able to go ahead and knock out uh, very likely one of these Zoroa. Unless he's got an Electro Power, then he could actually knock out the Absol. Something definitely in Bert's favor in this matchup. Now, on paper, it may look like he's playing off against, and he actually decides to Guzma the Absol. There's uh, the Electro Power. does have the Electro Power to knock it out. Just saying, look, now I can use my Jirachi as, as best as I want. I can use, pair that Jirachi's uh, Stellar Wish and its ability to retreat with the skateboard with that uh, Zapdos. Just do Thunderous Assault for 80 each turn, but Stefan immediately responds by putting down a Zoroark GX. And now he can get his hand draw going. So Rock GX's ability to trade, discarding a card, draw two cards. Helps you find multiple pieces, and it's sort of like a, a mini supporter without having played mm -hmm. a supporter. Yeah, much nice like Malamar, you're, you're looking to see the more Zoroark, the merrier. Um, and the punish for Bert having taken the time to knock out the Absol instead of knocking out a Zoroark would be multiple Zoroark on this turn for Stefan. So certainly on this turn, Stefan's looking to find energy to knock out that Zapdos, and find another Pokemon to attack with Rider's Beating. Alternatively, find a Devoured Field. Devoured Field being a Stadium card that allows uh, Zoroark GX's attacks to deal an extra 10 damage uh, with that Rider's Beating. So four is enough if you can find Devoured Field. It certainly does run enough basics to be able to put another basic down. In fact, there's one in his hand is the Riolu. He's going to trade it away in favor of something else. He does find a double colorless energy to attack with. And he does have another Zoroa in hand, so there's the fifth basic to get him the numbers that he needs to knock out the Zapdos without the use of the Devoured Field. And yeah, a little bit of a punish for Bert. He felt the need to knock out the Absol because his deck just doesn't function at full capacity without the use of Jirachi's Stellar Wish. But in doing so, now suddenly Stefan has had an excellent turn where he's able to set up multiple Zoroark, get down another Zoroark potentially for a Zoroark on the following turn. And now it's really difficult to stop the machine once it's going full speed. Yeah, and he did recognize that one of Bert's ways to draw cards is that uh, Zeb Striker with the sprint ability. So he did choose to Guzma out that uh, Blitzel before it bec could become a Zeb Striker. Obviously not knowing that, you know, the Zeb Striker is in Bert's 
prize cards at mm. the moment, so we didn't have access to it, but yeah, very intelligent recognizing that Bert uh, in previous matchups has definitely relied on using that sprint ability, discarding his hand and drawing four, uh, and to, just to get all the pieces that he needed to get. So really clever play there. I also want to point out in Stefan's hand, he does have a Diancy Prism Star, which may not seem so relevant, but it actually helps, definitely helps with the numbers for when your uh, fighting type Pokemon are attacking Zapdos because of that Zapdos's resistance to fighting types. Uh, just helps you get those knockouts, but this is what Bert wants to do. He wants to play Guzma, he wants to pick off those little Pokemon, and he's continuing to do so. So as long as he can chain these, should be in an okay spot, taking one prize each turn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and he does have that uh, non-GX Buzzwall in hand, um, which he can utilize Sledgehammer as soon as Stefan does go down to four prizes, and that's going to be very, very effective in the next couple of turns. He is going to have to knock out these Zoroarks eventually, but for now he's just sort of dancing around them, sniping down the little Pokemon on the bench, and eventually he will get to these two prize knockouts. In fact, if Stefan takes a prize this turn, that Sledgehammer, that sledgehammer attack from Buzzwall will become relevant uh, as long as Bert can find the energy to put on the Buzzwall. Remember, it doesn't attack for a lightning energy, so it's a little bit different. Wouldn't it be great if it did? Uh, uh, that's going to that's gonna require a beast energy or a rainbow energy. I think we would see a lot more Buzzwall in play if they could attack for lightning energy. But, of course, uh, you know, there are four rainbow energy available to Bert and one beast energy as well. So you can draw, draw supporters off the Jirachis too. But here we see Stefan... Sticking through his deck, getting rid of pieces that he might not need later in the game, and he's going to find that Ditto Prism Star. Uh, I think you were alluding earlier to the fact that the Alolan Muck, that's the only way to evolve it, is through that Ditto Prism Star. And we've seen really how powerful that Alolan Muck can be as a disruptor to Jirachi decks in particular over the course of this weekend. So Stefan finally seeing his opportunity to get this Ditto down. Um, he's seen a fair amount of switch effects already from Bert. So he's thinking, you know what, if this is going to be safe, maybe now's the time, and that he has to get this muck online before Bert gets more Jirachi down onto his own bench. It's a really clever turn to do so as well, because Bert actually has to decide, am I going to sledgehammer the Ditto, or am I going to sledgehammer a Zoroark GX and take two prizes? Obviously, taking two prizes is lovely, but when you're shot out of the game with the power of alchemy from Alolan Muck, you know, that can be pretty crippling, and it might not matter if he can take the two prizes and pull ahead at that point. Uh, so it's really making Bert decide you know, if he has a Guzma, whether to take out that Ditto Prism or whether to take out the Zoroark GX. Stefan is going to commit a double colorless energy onto the Rock Ruff. Threatening a Lycan Rock GX for the next turn. Again, he will need the Diancy Prism Star to be able to get knockouts on anything on Bert's side. Uh, sorry, any of the Zapdos on Bert's side because of that resistance. Looks like Bert here. He's got a handful of quite a few interesting combo pieces. He's going to put down another Jirachi, which does mean he will be able to continue his stellar wishing until that Alolan Muck comes down to shut off basic Pokemon's abilities. does have that Buzzwall as well. Now it's a matter of whether he can find an energy to attach to it to Sledgehammer for a 120 multiplied by 2. That's enough to knock out a Zoroark GX. It looks like he's going to be... Playing down as many cards as he can, and then drawing and hoping to find the energy that he needs. Ooh, doesn't look like a whole lot of useful. There's a Shrine of Punishment, which will certainly put a clock on Stefan to be able to try to bounce that stadium. It's going to be putting one damage counter on each of his GX Pokemon in between turns, but looks like he's just going to play... A Nest Ball to grab a Tapu Koko Prism Star. One of those Set cards that, for... again, we've seen so many of. Mm -hmm. Few accounts because you can only have one in your deck. Um, but I'm sure if you could run multiple <laughs> of them, we'd see just as many as the Electro Powers we've oh, seen over the weekend. You, you would see four of them if you could <laughs> run multiples. Dance of the Ancients, you uh, send it to the Lost Zone and can place two Lightning Energy from the discard onto your bench Pokemon. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. So unfortunately, he also missed the energy off the Lily, and that's quite big. We're not seeing a rainbow energy. We're not seeing a beast energy. Oh, He's not going to be able to Sledgehammer, and this is the turn to do so because Sledgehammer only does that extra damage when your opponent has exactly four prize cards, and this is the turn where he has exactly four prize cards. So it means that if that Stefan can take a knockout on his turn, he has successfully dodged the Sledgehammer turn, and then Bert's going to have a really difficult time actually dealing with these Zoroarks. He also hasn't found a way to knock out the... Ditto Prism either, so you've got to expect that that Alolan Muck's going to come out in the next turn. Does find a Rescue Stretcher for the Blitzel to help him draw cards in the next few turns, because we did see him take the Zeb Striker off the prize card, so that is a live possibility. It's going to look like a retreat into a Zapdos, and 
Thunder Self 80. This is so bad for Bert. He he needed the rainbow or the beast energy this turn to get the knockout on the Zoroark. It would have been up by two prizes. He would have then been able to sort of return to dancing around the Zoroarks to taking those two knockouts on the bench. But now the fact that he's missed this opportunity is, is so detrimental to him. Yeah, it does feel like it was just a one one uh, single prize trade each turn, and now he's sort of missed that one. And we do also know that Stefan plays two Acer Roller, so that damage could end up being totally irrelevant uh, mm -hmm. if he does choose to. Looks like he's going to trade away the Diancy Prism Star. Just find some more pieces. And that's that Field Blower. We were talking about how so many people don't play Field Blower anymore, but you know, this could be maximum value. If you can play Field Blower and get rid of two escape boards on the side of Burt, I mean... How is he going to retreat? He's got to find someone, just one of those three switching cards that he plays outside of Guzma. Stefan does actually have the Acerola in hand. He could bring up the Zoroark and immediately play it back down onto the Ditto Prism, but I suspect he's going to want to save that Ditto Prism for the Alolan Muck when oh, he's yeah. able to find it again. I think that Ditto Prism, that's got a reserved sign for Alolan Muck on there. I don't think it's, it's going to... Uh, it's got Grimer in its name now. Yeah, <laughs> Grimer Prism Star. We'll go with that. Double oh, colorless energy down onto the Zoroark, and I think he had to play the Ace Roller that turn. 80 damage might not seem like much, but when you're facing a deck that has Electro Powers and Choice Bands, you know, we saw, we saw a Zapdos one-hit knockout at Tapu Lele GX earlier, so nothing is safe when you have Zapdos and Electro Powers. Yeah, that was very around. likely going to be a, a two-hit knockout for Burton. I think if Stefan were to ever assume that that's not the case, that would be a blunder on his part. So good on him, utilizing the Ace Roller at the exact right time. Um, and oh, finds the power of alchemy, Alolan Muck Ooh. as well to shut off abilities and gets the Bloodthirsty Eyes down on the Lycan Rock GX to pull up Blitzel, denying that Zeb Striker with its sprint ability again. Not and you to know mention, what he does have the Field Blower for the escape boards this turn if he wants to, but he doesn't even need to worry about that now because Alolan Muck's in play. Yeah, in one turn, he's shut off pretty much all of Bert's tools to be able to uh, find his supporter cards and get draw going. And I think that turn might have just pulled Stefan quite far ahead. It's going to be difficult for Bert to find all the pieces he needs to come back here. I mean, he missed that sledgehammer turn as well. It's quite awkward. Yeah, as long as Stefan was able to take any knockout on that turn, he's going to dodge the sledgehammer turn from the Buzzwall. And that means that his Zoroarks are safe. He's played one Acerola, but he does have another still in the deck. So it is likely that he's going to be able to, to save the Zoroark when it does come into range of a two-hit knockout from a Zapdos again. That's his last escape board down as well. So if that escape board ever gets removed from the game, it's going to be difficult for him to switch his Pokemon around. We see another Guzma. I feel like these Zapdos Jirachi decks just, just have so many Guzmas. It always feels like more than four. Yeah, I think it's because it's just the, the combination of Guzma and Escape Rope and the amount of manual retreating they do with Skateboard is higher than any other deck. And the, I guess they just have so many ways to grab the Guzma yeah. as well. They're constantly having it at the right time. Stefan thinking about what he's going to promote here. Now, Rider's Beating doesn't actually knock out a Zapdos right now. He does need to find a basic to put down on the bench or find a stadium card such as Devoured Field that will boost his damage output by 10. He does want to keep up in the prize trade, though, as you'll notice both Bert and Stefan are both on three at the moment. And Stefan does have to take all of his prizes one at a time because Bert is not going to be playing down any of his GX Pokemon this game. But you think with the threat of Sledgehammer having, you know, been taken off the board. Stefan can breathe a big sigh of relief, yeah, I think. Yeah, definitely. Because that potentially would have just swung the game into like, Bert's favor. There's Lucario GX back into the deck and he's going to find a basic Pokemon, I suspect, to put down. That Pokemon communication being one of the few additions to the, to the Zoroark GX, Lycanroc GX that we have now. Doesn't find, all, the only basic that I see there is that Tapu Lele GX and you don't really want to be putting down Tapu Lele GX when you don't get maximum value out of it. Mm -hmm. He's thinking hard about what he's gonna play here. Doing some mental calculations, mental maths, I think. It's good, keeping it sharp. Like to see that. Does get the Tapu Lele GX, and he's probably going to use its Wonder Tag ability to find a supporter if he needs one. But he just has so much going for him at the moment. I mean, that Lycanroc GX is pretty threatening there, that Zoroark GX is pretty threatening. And with the Tapu Lele GX on the bench now, he does just have the necessary damage with Riotus Beating to knock out the Zapdos. He doesn't necessarily need a supporter here. I think the Zapdos is the biggest threat that Burt does have to offer right now. 
Now, if that Zoroark GX does get knocked out, however, there is no follow-up Zorua and there is no follow-up Zoroark GX. And that Lycanroc GX, although a fighting type, uh, you'd think it'd be super effective against Lightning, but not in the case of Zapdos, so it mm -hmm. isn't actually so threatening. Uh, so it would be nice if Stefan could fill that fifth bench spot with another Zorua, but doesn't seem to be the case does open the opportunity for Bert to be able to hit, get two hit knockouts, especially if you can find something like Shrine of Punishment to deal that a little really bit of important here. extra damage between turns. Taking look at that thinking face. Look at the discard pile. He knows this is big. <laughs> it is a, a very strict thinking face. You can see that this turn is a big one. does have a Guzma, though. He does still have the Lucario GX in the deck, which... Uh, gives boosted damage the turn that you evolve it. Yeah, but unfortunately, 120, Lu. just not enough to knock out a Zapdos just because of that resistance. And we do mm -hmm. see Diancy Prism Star has been put to the Lost Zone. Uh, but he's going to select to get rid of the final escape board that Bert plays. So that's all three escape boards because of that field blower now in the discard pile. Means it's going to be really difficult and awkward for him to be retreating his Pokemon. And when you've got this Jirachi that you just want to throw into the active spot, of course you want to be able to retreat it as much as possible. And those final... Two prizes for Stefan, actually, Zorua and Zoroark. Oh, quality, quality prizing. Yeah. But recognizing that he's not going to get that Zeb Striker out this turn, uh, this game, rather, and so he's going to Ultra Ball it away and find that Nihiligo. Uh, Nihiligo is something we haven't seen so much uh, at the moment. It hasn't really become relevant during this tournament, but it could become very relevant in this game. So, attack Nightcap. You can only use it if your opponent has two prize cards remaining, and you can use one of your opponent's attacks as the attack for this card. It's kind of wild. Opens up a lot of different uh, strategies. Unfortunately for Bert, Zoroark GX is actually resistant to psychic Pokemon. So getting a one-hit knockout with this Pokemon could be a little bit difficult. There is still just the threat that Baby Buzz does present, even though Stefan was able to dodge the sledgehammer turn. I mean, we could still just see choice band and some reasonable damage here. I mean, also it does have 130 hit points, so it's not actually yeah. guaranteed that it's going to be knocked out as well. That ride is beating doing 20 times the amount of Pokemon you have in play. That would require a fifth basic on the bench and that devoured field. Which we do know that, uh, although Bert doesn't, that Stefan drew that Zerua off the prizes. So he will have a Pokemon to put down there if he so chooses. And Stefan with a whole, a hand, whole lot of uh, interesting pieces that he can play. He's got some disruption. He's got a pal pad to bring back supporters that he might la need later in the game. Something such as that Acer Roller. It's quite critical if uh, Bert is going for two hit knockouts. He's able to play Acer Roller and deny that. That's pretty, pretty influential. He's going to shuffle pal -pad. back in the Guzma. A double Guzma. Okay. To ensure that he can seal the game and take prizes off those Pokemon that don't have so many uh, hit points. Such as that Jirachi. That is fair. I mean, Stefan knows that he, even if Bert is able to take a two prize knockout, if Stefan can take a knockout this turn, he still will win before Bert can take his third prize. Yeah, I mean, so it's he's just going the more direct route, which is take the Guzmas and get the knockouts. Yeah, just to ensure that you can secure those uh, cheap prizes on things like Jirachi and Nihiligo. But also taking his time, having a look at through uh, his opponent's discard pile. You, know, you always want to know what outs your opponent has and what they can do. This isn't a guaranteed knockout on this buzzwall at the moment, though. Does need to find the Devoured Field and another basic Pokemon if he wants to use the Riders Beating to achieve that knockout. <laughs> Just going to give a quick read to Nihiligo. I don't blame him. Unfortunately, he can't see our stream at the moment, so it doesn't have that <laughs> nice big card to have a look at. It's a card that we've spoken a lot about this weekend, but I don't think we've actually seen it in play up until now. Stavon's going to attach an energy to that Lycanroc. He can now Claw Slash or Dangerous Rogue with that. He's actually going to retreat the Zoroark. It goes down. Zoroark GX comes to the active, and then we see the uh, GX move, Dangerous Rogue, which does 50 times the amount of your opponent's benched Pokemon. And Bert had a pretty full bench, so that's enough to knock out that Buzzball. 200 Ready? damage, plenty to take his fifth prize of the game, and now Stefan just needs one more knockout, whereas Bert still needs, at the very least, two. And Bert's in a really awkward position here, right? This turn, he can only take two prizes, if any. Uh, and this Nihiligo... I mean, his opponent doesn't have two prize cards remaining, so unfortunately the attack nightcap is not actually going to do anything uh, at this point. 
yeah, this is just a game of, of missed opportunity for Bert. If he'd had the rainbow energy or the beast energy to sledgehammer when Stefan was at four prizes, then he could have knocked out his Zoroark very quickly, um, sort of stranded Stefan with less resource ability, and also he would just have been at a prize advantage for this entire game. So that missing that one turn really, I think, is what sealed this game in favor of Stefan. Yeah, and I'd like to point towards um, Stefan's excellent play of denying the Blitzel, denying the Zeb Striker mm. is probably one thing that uh, was particularly excellent. It meant that Bert, you know, he couldn't really draw um, cards when he needed to, didn't have that option to sprint. But also the fact that Stefan plays Field Blower was pretty influential as well. And that Alolan Muck, it feels like everything in Stefan's deck is designed to defeat this Zapdos Jirachi deck. So it was an excellent medical. So Bert is going to try for the two hit knockout onto the Lycanroc GX. Do so with Tapalele, double colorless energy, and that will be the knockout for uh, Stefan. He will go up one game in this Masters top eight of the trading card game, and that's got to feel good. That puts a lot of pressure on Bert to really respond in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are still playing best of three, even though the clock does have an additional 25 minutes on it, because we need a conclusion to this series. But that first game near misses for Bert. Um, along the way, the Nihilego not being able to do anything because Stefan went down to one prize before it was available, and the Sledgehammer off oh, of that Buzzwall, of course, um, was, was the big kicker for the game. Had I mean, Bert been able to find an energy, he searched through quite a few cards to get it that turn. He did not have it, but if he did, then things could have looked a lot different. So, going into game number two, I think he's going to be looking largely to execute the way that he did in game one but uh, maybe just slightly faster. He wants to have that rainbow energy as soon as Stefan goes to four prizes so he can knock out one of the Zoroark. Yeah, I mean, that's what that Buzzwall's there for, right? It, it's been teched in specifically to knock out those Pikachu and Zekrong tag teams, exactly 240 damage with Sledgehammer on that four prize turn. Uh, and also on that Zoroark GX as well, being weak to fighting. That's why it's there, and it's really unfortunate that he couldn't execute that because it just put him one turn behind each time. Um, and, you know, he would have been down on one prize, I think, at the mm -hmm. point at the end of the game there and you know, wouldn't have had to have scooped the game there. Although I will say that, you know, Stefan's deck does just seem quite well matched for this particular matchup with the addition of the Alolan Muck in particular, the field blower to knock off those escape boards from the Jirachis. He's got quite a few resources that do allow him to contest the engines that Bert is trying to run here. But we're going to be seeing game number two. Bert does get a Jirachi in that active, so that's the ideal starter Pokemon for him and we're going to see him get things off the ground here. His hand is actually excellent. So he has an escape board, which of course he's going to be attaching to that Jirachi, perhaps not straight away because he does know that Stefan does play that field blower. And so he doesn't want to put down all his escape boards uh, the turn that he's not going to be using them. Mm -hmm. He wants to get maximum value out of those. Um, he has the Zapdos as well that he could put straight down. Um, and he has ways to search for more Pokemon. He also has a Guzma, so that means that anything that Stefan puts on his bench is likely going to be knocked out next turn if Bert can find an energy card. Um, so, I mean, what more could you ask for in this in this deck? It just seems like this Zapdos deck just finds Guzma every turn, turn you know, turn one, turn mm -hmm. two, whenever, whenever they need it. They do really need it very early on to take those early knockouts. We saw um, in the last game, Bert had to prioritize knocking out the Absol, but because he did that, then Stefan was able to get to Zoroark on turn two. So ideally, Bert does not have to knock out the Absol early here and can instead knock out a Zoroa and deny the Zoroark. But we're going to have to see, can Stefan find those counters again this game? Because they were shining really nicely for him in game one. I think he wanted to find a draw supporter of those five cards from Stella Wish, but unfortunately only finds the Nest Ball, which isn't exactly what you're looking for. But you know what's just as, almost as good as a draw supporter is that Zeb Striker with sprint ability. Discard your hand and draw four. Blitzel is one piece of that Zeb Striker. He tried very hard to get this Zeb Striker online in the last game, and Stefan shut it down two or three times. But we'll see if Bert can get it developed this game. He's going to have to pass back over to Stefan without a draw supporter. That really hurts. But still getting two draw to developed on turn one and having a Zapdos in hand is not too shabby. Here we see Stefan's strategy, right? He's not using Professor Elms, he's just using Nest Balls and Ultra Balls to get those basic Pokemon that are going to evolve into Zoroark GX, that are going to evolve into Lycanroc GX. And this is just one way. I think he's going to try to find multiple of these search cards, Nest Ball uh, being a good start here. And he's going to try to find those uh, Zoroas and possibly the Ditto Prism Star. It'll be interesting to see how early he tries to get out the Alolan, uh, Alolan Muck with its Power mm -hmm. of Alchemy ability. Yeah, he went for it around the mid-game last game, but it was so good that there is certainly a chance that he's going to prioritize it a little bit 
higher this time around. So he had a nice over-the-shoulder shot then of looking at Stefan's deck, and I didn't see the Ditto Prism star there, so, you know, that could be a problem. But you also have to think, I mean, anything you put on the bench is just susceptible to that Zapdos. That Zapdos yeah. just brings something up, comes in with the Thunderous Assault, does 80 damage, so... I mean, do you even put down the Ditto Prism star right now? It's always uh, a bit of a liability there. No, he timed the Ditto Prism very well in the previous game. It was when there were so many threats on the field that realistically Stefan knew that his Ditto was not the primary target there, and he knew that it was going to survive for a lowland muck to be played. He's actually just going to go ahead and fetch that Absol and try to prevent these Jirachi from being able to retreat. That's right. It was the turn where uh, he had to get the Sledgehammer off, but he decided had to decide between Zorak GX and Ditto, but in the end actually couldn't find the Sledgehammer, so hoping to see a nicer, effective Sledgehammer this turn. Looks like Stefan might just be attacking with Rayul <laughs> this turn. He hasn't actually found another Zerua. So that is really quite awful. And unfortunately, it is what you risk when you're not playing Professor Elm's lecture. And we do know that uh, Bert actually has in his hand, he has Zapdos, he has Guzma, but I'm not seeing an energy card, and uh, Jirachi, well, it is great. It doesn't find you an energy. It just finds you a trainer. And I don't and think he even found a draw supporter. That might be a Cynthia in hand. No, he does have some. He does have access to uh, a way to draw more cards, and that is that Zeb Striker. So if he does find that with the Ultra Ball, he will have to v commit heavily to this play, though, with the Ultra Ball for Zeb Striker. Play down the Zapdos, play down the Guzma, and then draw four cards. And Oof. hope to hit an energy. And he does discard the Cynthia because he wants those Guzma in his deck. He wants to be able to draw into them later. Whereas now he's hopefully going to be able to sprint every single turn for a fresh four cards. So here we go, Zapdos, Guzma out the Zerua, trying to deny that from ever coming into a Zoroark, ever coming into play. Three, four, oh, he and missed he the energy. Whips. Oh, that is just awful. So now we've just got a Zapdos trapped in the active spot. He's Bert's, used a Bert's Guzma. having a tough time. Yeah, really crippling not to find one of those. I think there's four lightning energy, five lightning energy, four rainbow energy. So there are nine potential cards in deck that could have been found then, but doesn't find any, and that's just, that's just sad. That's, that's, that's all there is to say. That's just sad. It was it's very disappointing. Yeah, it, it wasn't even greedy. It was just, it was the line that he had to take. This is going to get down the shrine of punishment, maybe start putting some of those damage counters onto the Zoroark that he knows inevitably Stefan is going to play this turn. But if that Zoroa wasn't there, we'd be looking at such a different game here for Bert. Yeah, sigh of relief for Stefan. He's able to get that Zoroark GX he had in hand. It looks like he's going to trade away the Alolan Muck. Now, he can always get it back with Rescue Stretcher, but uh, I guess that was the ideal target for his trade. Interestingly, Zoroark GX, it's right, is beating, does damage uh, times the amount of Pokemon that you have in play. And looking at Stefan's field, there aren't that many Pokemon there, so might not even be knocking out this Zapdos. And we could have a Burt Walters take two going on. Could have another we chance. We could. To, could have another chance to knock out some of these basics. It is possible. But he's going to grab that Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag for, looks like that Lily. He's going to be able to draw a couple cards here. And he's, he needs two additional basic Pokemon to get the knockout onto the Zapdos, or he needs one basic and that Devoured Field to give an extra 10 damage to Zoroark's Riotous Beating attack. So a lot of different pieces he's looking for in this draw, and I just saw a fair few energy. Yeah, it doesn't look like he got nearly any of what he needed here. So importantly, what we should have known earlier, he doesn't actually run Devoured Field. Ah, uh, so well, you know, that... Makes quite a difference. Would have needed two basics Labyrinth. off of the draw. It does run Wondrous Labyrinth, so there is a way to uh, bounce that Shrine of Punishment, but there isn't a way to deal 130 damage to that mm -hmm. Buzzwold, like we were saying before. Certainly can knock out a Zapdos, hmm. but didn't quite find it. So there's just 80 damage on that Zapdos this time, and we see Burt Walters gets to play again. Um, his hand is finally found an energy. He would have liked to have seen that last turn, that's for sure. Yeah, again, just sort of one turn off for Bert. It's a lot of slightly awkward timing here, but he will be able to take the knockout onto uh, looking like the Riolu this turn. And he's finally got the engine going as well. The Zeb Striker uh, on the bench there, able to discard his hand and draw four cards each turn. Uh, when you're a deck that can pretty much play its hand down to a very small hand size each turn, you know, it's not so bad that sometimes yeah. you're discarding no cards and just drawing four cards. All right, so the Riolu will be knocked out this turn, Bert taking his first prize, and Shrine of Punishment is starting to add up. 
Yeah, so never forget it is, that shrine. it is definitely possible that with, you know, choice band electro power, double electro power going forward, that Burt can actually knock out the Zoroark with Zapdos instead of requiring the Buzzwool to do the job. But we are going to see the Mallow for Stefan. He can pick any two cards from his deck, put them on top of the deck, and then immediately trade to get those two cards. I see he's eyeing up a couple of basics, and that seems like a very wise choice at this point if he's going to want to knock out that Zapdos. He's going to need a full bench. Six Pokemon in play. He probably wants to find some more Zorua as well, just to get those down, just to make sure there's a backup Zoroark GX in case some... Uh, Electro power shenanigans mm. and choice bands come out, which we've seen multiple times before. Yeah, I mean, despite Bert missing on an energy two turns ago, he still has taken the first prize this game. So he's still able to sort of set the pace here. And Stefan's going to trade away that Lucario. Probably not going to come in too necessary this game. And just play down three basics so that Riotous Beating does get the knockout here. Yeah, excellent. Excellent turn, getting down multiple more basics. It means that he has follow-up attackers, just in case his Zoroark GX is knocked out. Uh, committing an energy to the Rock Ruff as well threatens that dangerous Rogue GX attack, uh, which we saw put in a little bit of work against that Buzzwall last turn. And this is really the time when Burt needs to sort of uh, start setting up some Zapdos, and additional Pokemon, getting his hand together, start laying down some damage, eyeing up that Tapu Koko Prism. Dance of the Ancients ability, you take the Tapu Koko, put it in the Lost Zone, and you can put uh, two Lightning Energy from your discard, one onto each of two benched Pokemon. Doesn't look like Stefan either got a uh, Ditto Prism Star down. No, he didn't. Mean, uh, because I do believe it's in his prizes, which is probably a crucial point there, but it does mean that that Power of Alchemy, Alolan Muck, Muck, won't come into play this game, which really allows Bert to just use that draw engine that he has in this deck with that Jirachi with the Stellar Wish, that Dance of the Ancients ability with Tapu Koko Prism. Yeah, but the Absol's still on the bench for Stefan, making it a bit more difficult for Bert to get these Jirachi in and out of the active. So it will go to sleep, and he will Stella Wish. I don't see a switching card. I see a couple of Electro Powers. He's building up a lot of damage here for a Zapdos attack, potentially, to knock out a Zoroark. But he needs to get the Zapdos into the active spot, and he's not able to do that this So we're turn. looking for a switch. We're looking for an escape rope. I'm not seeing either of those. I'm seeing a Shrine and a couple of energy cards. And he did end up finding a Faulkner, but he... Played the Lily this turn, of course, so we can't use that. Uh, don't you wish we were in a fantasy land where we could play multiple supporters in one turn? Well, I've heard rumors that we may be entering that fantasy land with a card called Lieutenant Surge. <sighs> one can dream. In, in the near we'll future, soon. not so sure. So there we go. There heard goes the, the Dance of the Ancients. One energy's going to go on Zeb Striker. Oh. One energy's going to be it. considered. Uh, has Bert sprinted this turn yet? No? This is a way, uh, I'm not sure, but this is a way for him to retreat the Jirachi manually. So mm -hmm. he would put an energy onto the Zapdos, an energy onto the Zeb Striker, um, attach to the Jirachi and retreat. Yeah. We are receiving news that Jose Marrero has won his top eight match. He was playing against Lucas Guerrera. And he's playing Pikachu Zekrom. So that means we've got one Pikachu Zekrom at least going into the semifinals. That looks like that's just a pass from uh, Bert there. Going into Stefan Ivanov's turn now. He will be able to take a knockout on this Jirachi. That's pretty big. That's one of uh, Bert's escape boards will did, be taken out of play. Did Bert only have one lightning energy in the discard for Dancing He the did. Ancients? I think he thought he might have had two. That's where he made... Bit of an error that turn, I'm thinking. He attached to the Blitz or to the Zebstrika and then didn't have one to put onto the Zapdos. Uh, and he's got he's got two Electro Powers in hand, I think. So I see an Ultra Ball now from That's Stefan. Unfortunate. This this uh, Zoroark deck just has so many ways to get Pokemon, so many ways to get tools, anything it needs. Uh, you know, those field blowers, just through those trade abilities. He's probably gonna look for a Lycanroc GX, potentially to use the Bloodthirsty Eyes ability. Draw up a Pokemon from the bench. Can't quite see if that's exactly what he selected. Mm. 
Oh, there we are. So Bloodthirsty Eyes is going to pull up that Zeb Striker, and that's made itself a target with an energy attack. And there's a judge to follow judge up as well. as well. Oh, my goodness. The resources that Bert's been saving up, both Electro Powers, that he couldn't quite reach the 200 hit point threshold of the Zoroark with his Zapdos in the previous turn, but, you know, maybe he was saving them to get there on the following turn. Now he's going to have to shuffle those back into the deck. And he's going to be put back down to just four prizes. And Stefan's going to knock out the Zipstrika this turn, meaning that Bert's going to be stuck with those four prizes, as well as the Absol still being on the board, so it being that much more difficult for Bert to use Stellar Wish. Stefan's not got him on lock just yet, but... Stefan is in a very commanding presence right now, and he's going to be going down to four prizes, but having judged the turn that he does so makes it unlikely that Bert is able to find the Buzzwall with Sledgehammer and a Rainbow or Beast Energy. And there's no sprint available to him because this Zep Striker is probably going to be knocked out, and amazingly as well, he does he's find the, the Wondrous, Wondrous Labyrinth. Labyrinth. And that is a card that is really, really going to hinder Bert. Um, I do think he drew the Shrine of Punishment off that judge to four, but... That Wondrous Labyrinth, uh, any non-fairy Pokemon actually costs one more to attack. Um, so that doesn't mean that you can't just do these shenanigans of you know, dropping a Zapdos, playing one energy and dealing loads of damage. You actually have to do a little bit of setup and that's really not what this Jirachi Zapdos deck is looking to do. It's all about speed, it's all about dropping that mm -hmm. one energy and just going in for the knockout. Really importantly, it means that Bert would need more energy onto a Buzzwool this turn to actually use Sledgehammer, so it's not even just as easy as Buzzwool Rainbow Energy and a Guzma, or Buzzwool Rainbow Energy and a Switch here. So we might not see a Sledgehammer again. It's probably heartbreaking for Bert. It's really unfortunate. That's, I mean, honestly, the whole reason that he's running the Buzzwool in this deck, not necessarily just for Zoroark, for Pikachu and Zekrom as well, but that is one real advantage that his deck has in this matchup, is that he is running that Buzzwool. He does have ways to play his hand down and then play Lily as well to draw extra cards, but it will mean committing, will mean using a few of his uh, like switching cards or using uh, things like escape board. He doesn't want to put down multiple escape board at one time when he knows that his opponent is playing field blower. It just feels really uh, not like something you want to be doing. Does draw six cards, does find the buzzwall, but not much else. Doesn't find energy to attack with it or a way to replace that. There is a replacement for the stadium. Speaking of Wondrous Labyrinth. Well, that is a big, big hit for Bert because he's got a switch in hand. He has a rainbow energy, I believe, or did he, he played the rainbow energy onto the Zapdos this turn. Yes, so he will be probably committed to attacking with the Zapdos. Mm -hmm. And there is a switch. And it's going to lay down quite a lot of damage on this Zoroark, especially when you consider the Shrine of Punishment is going to start adding damage to that Lycanroc and that Tabu Lele GX as well. And you know what? There's there's no way that he could have known that he was going to draw into the Buzzwall and then use Jirachi's ability to find the Shrine of Punishment to get rid of the Wondrous Labyrinth. It was really unlikely that he gets that combination of cards, but had he saved the Rainbow Energy, he could have actually attacked with the Buzzwall this turn. And now this is a perfect turn for Stefan to possibly play an Acerola if he can find one. You've got to th gotta think that when you play that, when you've got access to trade pretty good chance of finding what you need. We've just had an update as well of the match between Kaiwen Kababe and Henry Brand. That was a top eight match uh, between two Australian players and the winner of that match progressing to top four will be Kaiwen Kababe. Um, so I think that is another Pikachu and Zekrom tag team into the top four. Okay, and that means that Kaiwen will be playing against the winner of this series here on the left side of the bracket. Yeah, interesting. I mean, Pikachu and Zekrom tag team, it wasn't at the top at the beginning of uh, day two, but it seems it's made its way there. So that's really interesting uh, that we're going to be seeing those big, powerful hitters in our semifinals. But Stefan here probably trying to find an Ace Roller or a way to uh, heal that Zoroark GX. He does only run one counter stadium in that Wondrous Labyrinth. Does have a Field Blower in the deck that he could use to get rid of the Shrine of Punishment. Oh, of course, not all stadiums are Prism Stars, are they? That's something I... Sometimes forget now that everyone's just playing Prism Star Stadiums. Yeah, the, the fact that they can only be removed by a counter stadium just makes them that much better. And it doesn't look like Stefan has the Acerola just yet. He's going to trade away the Nest Ball and dig two cards Ooh, deeper. He the first does card was the Acerola. It. Dude, That's that amazing. is so good. <laughs> Got to believe in the cards, right? Oh, man. The heart of the cards has come through for Stefan here. Finds another Zoroark GX as well just to make that sure that Zoro is not going to get picked off. 
I don't know about this, Ellis. Bert's just, he's not got a lot to work with here. He, he puts so much time into softening up this Zoroark for a knockout, and now Stefan, with just his Acerola, is going to shut that down. And Stefan looks like he, have, he has an interesting dilemma. He has the Viridian Forest, and he has the Field Blower. So he's thinking, all right, he's going to play down the Viridian Forest. His other option was just to Field Blower it away. He's deciding to get rid of those two escape boards, and this is looking pretty grim, I would say, for Bert on this side. But you know what, Zapdos? Never say never. It has all these electro powers. It has all these switching shenanigans going on. Looks like he might just be retreating the Zoroark now that he he's... he play a supporter this turn already? Now that he's bumped the Shrine of Punishment, I guess it's not really under threat. I still see that Ditto Prism Star in the prize cards there. I don't think it's looking good for uh, Bert, given that he's just lost two of his escape boards. Mm. And he's played a lot of switching cards this game. He probably played a supporter that... Off camera support that turn. We'll yeah. call it that. <laughs> Stella well, Wish now. Gonna look at the top five cards and just find anything, something to bring him back into this game. There's a switch card, there's a draw supporter. He could pull up the Zapdos and attack with Thunderous Assault, but he doesn't have Choice Bend and Electro Powers to be able to knock out the Zoroark. I, I think that Bert is just about locked out of this game here, and with that, might be locked out of a semifinals. You gotta keep trying when it's top eight. Can't settle for a loss here. So and Bert going, going into this match as the top seed, the only player to get 11 wins here this weekend, but his, his run very well may be coming to an end here. And, you know, you asked me earlier, Alice, is he, you think he's afraid going up against the North American international champion? I didn't think that was the case, but, I mean, Stefan Ivanov is a threat to be reckoned with. Oh, certainly. I think he's very familiar with this Zoroark Lycanroc build. Uh, he's able to... Piloted expertly. He played around a lot of different possible outs for Bert. It looks like he's going to grab the switch with that stellar wish. He also missed the uh, sledgehammer turn, unfortunately. Uh, Stefan is now on three prizes instead of four. Switch into that Zapdos and just get some damage down with that thunderous assault. And Lily for three cards. Electro power is nice to see. We'll add another 30 damage to the Zapdos, Zapdos' attack. But I think we know that Stefan also has that uh, Acer Roller in hand. So any damage that comes down now that isn't just a one-hit knockout can easily just be cleared by Stefan as he so chooses. Yeah, he did oh. find that Acer Roller. Chose not to play the Electro previous Power. Turn. Well, he could always play the Electro Power on the next turn, I suppose, for the knockout if the damage sticks. And there is a chance that Stefan will still just Acer Roller this, and then Bert would have wasted an Electro Power. Yeah, it makes sense to uh, play them when you're going to get that knockout. That's the Ultra Ball. It's going to be traded away. Yeah, I would say that Stefan Ivanov is a, in a pretty commanding position here, able to probably take three prizes over the next three turns. I mean, three trades every single turn. He's got so many cards in hand. There's just probably nothing that he doesn't have access to here. He can find additional energy with Viridian Forest. Now it just becomes a case of managing your hand size, mm. figuring out uh, which cards, what combinations you need, what's the best thing to trade away. I don't think the Zapdos Jirachi decks typically play any way to disrupt the opponent's hand. So anything he has now is something he can use in the future. It's all about just managing that appropriately. And looks like he's going to ace a roll of the heavily damaged Zoroark GX. Take that off the board as a two prize option for Bert. Put that Zorua back down so next turn he can evolve into Zoroark GX and continue that. You know, trade, just trade and trade and trade. Yeah, Pretty nice timing by size. Stefan yet again. He's going to take the knockout onto the Zapdos. Of course, he's dodged the Buzzwool turn. So now it's going to be quite difficult for Bert to yet again find a knockout onto the Zoroark GX. Stefan is down to two prizes, so we could potentially see that Nihilego come into play. Uh, yeah, well, I'd I like think to that see, Bert yeah. actually might have discarded that already. I'd like to see what work that Nihiligo can put in, but we're looking at a, an energy card and an escape room. Now, if he's going to be attacking with Zapdos, well, he needs to find one first. I don't mm -hmm. see one on the side of the board. Does he have a rescue stretcher in hand, maybe? He's got another Shrine of Punishment. Oh, there comes down the Nihiligo. It's an escape rope, so Stefan now is going to have to decide what he's going to send into the active position. Thinking about the Zorua, wondering, do I have enough Zoroark GX in play already? How 
much I mean, we are back. in the final couple turns of the game. Two trades every turn is probably more than enough. And we have news about our third quarterfinal match. Isaiah did take it over Daniel Altavia, and that was with a Zapdos Jirachi deck. So now we have, uh, what is it, Zapdos Jirachi and two of the Pikachu Zekrom, and potentially we could have a Zoroark and Lycanroc there in the semifinals. Yeah, it'd be interesting if the Zapdos Jirachi can come back, though, and we can see uh, two of those Zapdos Jirachis. But it looks like Nihiligo putting in work, able to use that nightcap. It copied the uh, dangerous Rogue GX attack of uh, Lycanroc GX to take a knockout on that uh, lead Pokemon of uh, that Zorua Stefan. That Zorua Stefan sent out. Sure, Bert would have loved to have taken two prizes on a uh, GX Pokemon. But from here, I just think Stefan, you know, he has total command of this game. Mm. Just has to take two more prizes. He has so many resources available to him with trade. I think, you know, probably half his deck is in his hand at this point. Bert does not have anything resilient enough in his deck to withstand two attacks from any of Stefan's Pokemon. So this is very likely just going to be two rapid knockouts here. And the final two prizes taken for Stefan in this game. I mean, sometimes you see in these Zapdos Jirachi lists, and certainly Bert does play at that Tapu Koko GX. Um, but usually that's played when there are multiple lightning energy in play just to get a big knockout in one turn um, or to survive an attack from something, say, as a Zoroark GX or a Lycanroc GX. But unfortunately, with very few energy on turn and that Tapu Koko Prism Star having already been used to accelerate energy, that Tapu Koko GX is no longer an option. Yeah, and usually we're hoping to use that Tapu Koko GX for Tapu Thunder GX, but Bert has already, he just used Dangerous Rogue GX from the Nihilego in the previous turn, so he would have to be um, arrow trailing into Sky High Claws, and that's not going to be enough to knock out the Zoroark. And there we go, the Stefan Ivanov down to one prize card. Uh, writing's on the wall, wall for Bert here, but he's still fighting on, seeing if he's able to get something going. I mean, that Buzzwall will be hitting that Zorak GX for uh, weakness. So a beast energy here could put in quite a lot of damage. Finds a choice ban and hits a beast Finds energy. Finds both the pieces. Double electro power, but electro power is not going to affect that Buzzwall. That is going to be the damage counters onto the Zoroark. And, and Bert knows that this game is over. Stefan Ivanov is our fourth and final player moving to the semifinals here. Bert Walters had an absolutely incredible performance over this weekend. 11 wins. The highest ranked player as far as seeding goes coming into the top eight. But unfortunately, he just could not stand up against the power of the Zoroark Lycanroc deck from our North American International.